Welcome to a quick class about hydroponic tomato production inside of greenhouses. My name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service, and today we will learn key aspects to manage your hydroponic tomato greenhouse. Tomato is a very popular crop that requires a lot of labor. In order to produce high yields, we need to focus on greenhouse and crop management. So let's start speaking about nutrition. Tomato is a large crop requiring an adjustment of nutrition throughout the crop cycle. We can separate tomato in three different stages of development when speaking about nutrition. These stages are transplant, production, and late production. Here you can see a recommendation for nutrient adjustment on different stages of development for tomato. Usually, in tomato, we maintain a pH from 6 to 6.5, and EC levels can go from 1.8 to 2.5 microsiemens, depending on the stage of development. As you can notice, nutrient content will be increased throughout the cycle of tomato. As I mentioned, tomato demands a lot of labor. In order to give energy for fruit production, pruning will be required. There are two types of tomato cultivar, indeterminate tomato and determinate tomato. Indeterminate tomato can grow up to a height of 10 to 12 feet. They are really tall. So the best way to prune a tomato plant will be to maintain one main stem with the help of a twine and remove all the suckers. Suckers are side shoots in tomato and all size shoots should be removed in order to keep energy for flower and fruit formation. Here is an example of a sucker. Plants grow really fast, so we need to keep an eye on your crop and remove suckers on time. Another pruning technique recommended for tomato is the removal of all leaves. Once one area is harvested, you can remove all leaves in the area. All leaves tend to respire a lot, which can reduce energy in your plant. Also, by removing leaves, we can promote air circulation and reduce potential pests. Once the plant is ready to produce flowers, we need to think about pollination. Pollination is essential for fruit formation, and in tomato greenhouse, we can use bumblebee to pollinate our flowers. One colony can contain about 75 bees, which can work perfect in a 30 feet by 200 feet greenhouse. You can notice pollination by looking your flowers. When we find pollinated flowers, we most of the time think the plant is ready to set fruits. But guess what? We need to work on maintaining the best environmental conditions to promote pollen germination. High temperatures higher than 85 degrees Fahrenheit can affect and interrupt pollen germination. If pollen germination is interrupted, no fruit will be formed. Ideal day temperature for, for tomato goes from 70 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. For nighttime, we recommend to keep temperatures from 58 to 63 de degrees Fahrenheit. Lower temperatures at night will help you to reduce respiratory loss of carbohydrate reserves. Remember, we need to focus on keeping energy to improve yield and quality. Another very important variable is light. The minimum DLI to grow tomato is 20, and the optimum level is 30. Tomato loves light, so we can use more light if this doesn't affect greenhouse temperature. When natural light is lower than recommended levels, supplemental lighting can be used. It's very important to monitor light inside of the greenhouse because cloudy days, greenhouse covering and structure can affect light. Also, by applying a specific light quality recipe to your crop, you can improve yield and flavor. 
In Hort Americas, we have a high efficiency lamp for supplemental lighting applications. This is the L1000 grow light from Current by GE. We also need to think about how light is entering to our greenhouse. Tall crops can create a lot of shade, so in order to maximize light penetration in our canopy, it's better to use covering that promotes diffuse lighting. For this, you can select coverings making this effect or apply products like Sotlac, which can be used to create diffuse light on greenhouse covering. Also, in order to avoid shading, it's recommended to keep a space of 5 to 6 feet between rows. Now, let's speak about CO2 enrichment. This is not mandatory inside of a greenhouse, but can help to improve yield when the crop is growing under good light levels. By maintaining CO2 levels from 800 to 1200 ppm, we can increase marketable yield from 14 to 20%. Just remember, we need good light levels for this to happen. Moving to our last variable, humidity. Tomato is a big crop with a lot of leaves. All of them transpire. We need to always monitor relative humidity levels in order to avoid accumulation of water vapor inside your greenhouse. Recommend the relative humidity levels goes from 70 to 75%. If relative humidity is going high, we must, we must use vents or exhaust fans to keep humidity within the recommended levels. This is very important because high humidity can increase pest incidence, also can affect nutrient uptake. Low, hum low humidity levels and high humidity levels can trigger calcium deficiency in tomato better known as blossom and rot, a nutrient deficiency that can be fixed by managing your environment properly. If we control all variables and work on crop management, we'll start harvesting great tomatoes from one to two months after transplant. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick class. Please subscribe if you like this video and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.